Hello ladies and gentlemen, Richard here, the creator of the Top Hat Gaming Man. And because today's subject is slightly more serious than normal, I'm actually going to um, take my hat off for this one, as we are going to be discussing how I nearly killed my own YouTube channel in the late stages of 2020. So I felt it would be worth sharing this anecdote with all of you, um, outlaying to you how it happened, and more importantly, um, so you can avoid yourself having these same sort of issues with your own YouTube channels potentially in the future. But before we get into all of that, I thought I'd quickly let you know that I am currently streaming live over on twitch.tv slash Top Hat Gaming Man Live. So if you fancy um, going over to there after you've watched this video, we can discuss this subject um, person to person within the Twitch um, live chat section. By the way, this is not simply just a cheap plug of my um, of my Twitch channel. All of this feeds into the overall narrative of what I am going to be speaking about today. So keep live streaming in mind as we go through this video. Okay, so to set the scene, let me bring you back to the summer of 2020, moving into September. I've had an awesome time um, on the channel over this period. Um, we've had some amazing views, um, potentially at an all-time high at that point, and I'm exploring more options on what to do next with the channel. And I felt in order to build an even um, stronger rapport with um, you, the viewers, it just makes sense to start um, doing live streams on my YouTube channel. After all, um, YouTube itself had um, been pushing me to do this um, with their notification system for quite some time, constantly recommending that I should start doing live streams in order to continue to build my audience. So I felt, why not? That sounds like the next plausible move. In regards to the YouTube live streams, I absolutely loved doing them. It was great to be able to speak to so many of you on a real-time basis rather than simply in the comment section for a change. Um, it was it was wonderful, to be honest. I loved every moment of it. In fact, people who were watching them would often turn up in the comment sections within my main content um, asking me when I'm going to be doing the next one as they had so much fun watching them. So it was certainly something um, I was beginning to do more and more based on the demand, which was obviously there. Throughout this process, I felt that these live streams were going fantastic. However, I noticed that slowly, in regards to my main content, I was starting to experience a problem. Every video I was tending to upload was slowly getting less and less views each week. And after a while, I noticed that my um, subscriber numbers were beginning to drop off too. So to be honest, I wasn't particularly worried about any of this. Um, being a YouTuber now for around over five years, I believe, um, I know it's the nature of the beast. Um, all YouTubers have their ups and downs, their peaks and troughs, and it's not um, a continuous um, upward trend um, when growing a channel. It's closer to riding a um, roller coaster ride than it is to anything else. So after a while, realizing that my numbers do not seem to be improving, uh, but are in fact getting worse and worse by the week, uh, by this point, I'm trying to pinpoint exactly what's going wrong and what the problem could be. Now, the first thing many YouTubers would do is obviously look at the external factors that could be impacting um, this change um, to the channel. So things that first came to mind was that many people could be distracted in the United States by the rather riveting um, US election process which was going on around the time which many people around the world were glued to. So people might not necessarily be searching for gaming content at all at that time. The other rather obvious thing as well which uh, quickly drew my attention was the fact that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X had both um, just launched. So if people were looking for gaming, most people would have been looking for videos on the newest technologies rather than looking um, for gaming topics which are retro related. So I felt perhaps I had fallen out with the algorithm somewhat. 
um, eventually going to the back end of the channel um, to analyse data more, I soon found out that the audience I'd already established were continuing to watch the channel as they always had done. But what had drastically changed was my reach. According to my analytics, YouTube were barely suggesting my content to anyone anymore who wasn't already aware of my work. So over the course of weeks, um, my reach um, to new audience members had slowly, slowly depleted. So what does anyone do um, when their revenue starts to drop off? Um, you start to look for revenue from other sources. So since people seem to be enjoying the live streams a lot, I just started doing live streams even more on the channel, sometimes weekly. So the shortfall in advertising revenue was often um, made up by the um, quality um, super chat feature that YouTube has implemented. So thank you to everyone who was enjoying the streams and regularly um, backing the channel through the super chat feature. Now, for the first few months all of this was going on, I wasn't particularly any financially worse off than I was normally, based on the fact that um, the dip in advertising revenue was made up from the amazing um, super chat backing um, the channel was getting through the additional live streams. But I obviously quickly come to the conclusion that this is not a particularly stable way of running a YouTube channel because obviously without um, consistent views, I've got no way of securing um, future brand deals. So um, by the time we got to December, which is arguably the hottest month of the year for YouTubers, I've got half the views I normally have. Uh, my subscriber um, numbers have gone down from gaining about 2,000 new subscribers a month to less than 600, and my watch time has also halved. So I did not get any brand deals at all throughout December, which is obviously the prime time when you, you're looking to get um, deals like that. So by the time we got to the end of the year, I realised I've got to work out what this problem is because it's clearly nothing to do with the PlayStation 5. It's clearly nothing to do with the US election because although I noticed that other YouTubers had small dips um, whilst these events were going on within the field of retro, they had all quickly bounced back from the, the, um, these external issues. Whereas I personally was still at the same low, I was not, well not the same low, I was at a lower low than I was um, when these things had first been announced and had first happened. So I had to work out what I changed with my channel and where I had um, gone wrong. So if you're still following by this point, um, bearing in mind what I've kept bringing up time and time again, I guess you can probably all guess what the exact issue with the channel was. And it appears that the main problem was live streaming on a YouTube channel. Um, you probably noticed that the majority of big YouTubers never ever live stream on their main channel and do the majority of their streams over on Twitch instead, even though Twitch is overall a much smaller platform with a much smaller reach than obviously that what we've got with YouTube. And the main reason I feel that most people do not do live streams on their YouTube channels is because it does detrimental um, damage to the channel overall. So I will explain how I have come to this hypothesis um, as we go through this video. From my time on the platform um, so far, well at least um, this time at present, the main thing that the YouTube algorithm appears to favour above anything else is strong watch retention. And when I say strong watch retention, I do not mean on a ratio basis. For example, um, audience members watching an average of seven minutes out of a 10 minute video. I mean on the basis of just pure length. For example, if I upload a 90 minute video and it gets a 20 to 30 minute watch retention, the videos seem to be pushed very well um, via the system. However, if I'm putting out two hour live streams and audience members are just popping in and popping out to basically say hello, potentially ask a few questions and then have me answer those questions, I'm only really potentially getting an average of um, three to five minutes watch retention. So when I'm getting watch retention that poor, that affects the reach of uh, my other 
uploads. So YouTube were, from what I could tell, looking at my live streams and my main content as the same thing. So when they're seeing that the live streams aren't being watched for a great amount of time, they are then looking at my channel as one that puts out videos that are not particularly engaging. So even when I was putting out um, highly engaging content uh, and that content was doing well in terms of um, watch minutes, it wasn't getting pushed the same way as it normally would do because of the live streams. So January and February throughout 2021 has been basically a time of rebuilding the channel and trying to get it back to a place it was in. Um, if you know much about YouTube, you'll probably be aware that advertising revenue in January is absolutely diabolical. Um, so it's great that I've got some amazing people who also happen to back the channel on Patreon who can help out on this roller coaster ride what is um, professional YouTubing. So in January, uh, the advertising revenue was down. I had stopped doing live streams, so couldn't get um, Super Chat back in over that period either. So I simp and I obviously couldn't get any sponsored deals either because who wants to sponsor a channel that doesn't hardly get any views? It was just about trying to rebuild and get back to the place I was in. So views were still very low um, throughout January, but I wasn't doing any live streams. However, as the month slowly progressed, by the very end, views had started to go up slightly and watch retention had improved drastically. So by the time we moved into the next month of February, um, views and watch time had basically returned to normal. So that pretty much proved to myself that live streams were the problem because from the moment I decided to drop them, my channel stabilized in terms of views and watch retention. So now what is next for the channel, you may ask? Well, I would like to carry on doing live streams because I had a lot of fun with them and people seemed to enjoy them. So I am slowly going through the process now of migrating everyone who likes those streams over to um, watch them on Twitch instead. So um, it's twitch.tv slash live. If you want to go over there and chat to me on there, that would be great. Um, if you're happening to watch this video as I upload or within the few, hour, uh, few hours from when I've uploaded it, I will be live on Twitch right now so we can discuss all of this more. So the point of this video, apart from trying to draw attention to my um, Twitch channel and let you know why the live streams have effectively been cancelled from my main YouTube channel, I felt that today's video was also important to highlight this issue so that other YouTubers do not make the same mistake. Uh, because through talking to my um, close friends, who are also professional YouTubers, some of them have been through exactly the same thing and managed to resolve the problem in exactly the same ways too. So although uh, with YouTube, um, it, there's not always a one, uh, one size um, fits all solution to solve problems, um, there are a lot of commonalities between channels um, in terms of fixing issues that seem to be hindering them. So to close this video, um, I would like to give a huge thank you as usual to all of the fantastic people who back the channel on Patreon because um, without you lot, I would have simply got off of this um, roller coaster ride quite some time ago. So thank you for um, allowing me to continue to do what I do through thick and thin. I love you all for that very much. So everyone who's watching right now, um, if you want to give your thoughts, feel free to put them down in the comment section below. Or if you want to um, speak to me about them person to person, come over to twitch.tv slash live right now. And if you've happened to click this video while it is fresh, you will be able to chat to me person to person right now. Or to be fair, if you're watching this video after release, um, go over to Twitch and follow the channel anyway, because I will be streaming on there regularly and then you'll get the notifications. So you'll definitely get a chance to speak to me at some point down the line. So yeah, let's have some fun. Cheerio. 
Born in London in 86, a stash show gent named Richard Parliament. He loves to wrestle, but he loves one more thing, and belts round the world. He fights in his comments and he argues with fans. It's a problem no one understands. If there's two things he loves, it's getting at, and belts round the world. Drinking fine wine, fighting fanboys, handhelds round the world. Top Hat Gaming Man.